there everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. And I'm here today with the worst music stand in the world. Today I am going to be talking about my favourite books about the recorder. These books are designed to help you practice. They are either learning methods or exercises for your technique. And um, I've collected them over the years and they've really helped me along the way. And I've been hearing from a lot of you, a lot of you are living in remote places where there are no teachers, where you have limited access to other people who are playing the recorder. And I thought it might really help if I give an introduction to all of these different kind of books so you might know what to order. I think pretty much all of these books can be ordered online, so maybe if there's one where you think, ah, oh, that would really help, then you can order it and continue your recorder-ing. Some of these books are very advanced, some of these are more intermediate, some of these will give you tips right from the beginning. I am only covering the books that I have. There are, of course, many more books out there. If you have a book that you really like to use, or you know of one that I uh, think might be of interest to me or of other people, please leave it in the comments. Okay. I go on about these books all the time, so we're going to start with them. This is Walter von Hauer's The Modern Recorder Player, and it's in three volumes. Walter wrote these books originally in the 70s. Oh no, the 80s. I thought it was the 70s. The first book really goes from the very beginning, how to hold the recorder, how to move the fingers, about breathing, and about articulation. So those are really the core concepts of the recorder with lots of uh, <laughs> just lots of very lovely pictures of Walter when he was a young man. So this is really the basics but it gives you a very thorough grounding and also to a very advanced level. In volume two we have about scales and arpeggios, about trills, about vibrato and more about articulation. So once you have this solid grounding, these will all enhance your playing. The whole idea is that as a recorder player, you need to have all of your tools in order, in order to be able to realize your musical ideas. So he's giving you the tools for vibrato, for trills, and there's a lot of um, ex musical examples and there's a lot of exercises. Then in book three, we're looking at all of the basics of the recorder, but then more with regards to contemporary music. For the fingers, we have glissando, finger vibrato, special effects, micro intervals. Uh, for the breathing, we have extreme vibratos, harmonics, circular breathing, multiphonics. Uh, for the tongue, we have the guttural flutter and flutter tongue. Did you know I did a video on this? So these three books from Walter von Hauer can really take you a long, long way. And especially if you're studying recorder, you just have to have these. These are such a good resource. The second set of books that I'm going to talk about are by Gudrun Hayes, and they were translated from German into English by Peter Bowman. Um, there are two books. Um, it's called Advanced Recorder Technique and book one is The Fingers and Tongue and book two is Breathing and Sound. I really like how Gudrun approaches this. In everything she does, she's very, very musical. She's always holding, um, I think, especially Baroque music as a reference. So if you're really into playing early music, um, these are very great. And every technique she talks about, she immediately um, refers to an existing piece of music. So, for example, you're practicing your double tonguing with some Vivaldi concertos, or you're practicing your trills with some hot air. So, from the beginning, she really builds up the exercises. We have lots of trilling exercises. So, we also have scales, arpeggios, chromatic scales, how to do smooth double tonguing, virtuoso technique in all keys, trills, finger vibrato. That's the Latimer and double tonguing with diddle. So I use these a lot. Actually this summer I suddenly had this kind of passion to start practicing trills and I spent a happy couple of weeks on these exercises. Then in book two, Breathing and Sound, she really takes the time to let you get to know your instrument. I used this a lot the first year that I moved to Amsterdam and I remember spending hours and hours standing in a room, blowing long notes, walking into different corners to feel the acoustics. And she makes the book um, very interactive in that she includes different charts 
but you have to fill in while you're practicing. So it's different exercises to get you to listen and to help you get to know the instrument and you draw things or you write things down. Then she has a really great chapter called Suggestions for Note Shaping in Examples from the Repertoire. So she doesn't only say by the technique, but she applies it, she helps you to apply it directly to music. And for me, when I was studying and I was taking these techniques and then figuring out how to put them into the music I was practicing. This was really helpful. We are now going to the classic. This is Helmut Munkenaya. According to this book, these were published in the 60s, but it's called The, um, the Advanced School of Recorder Playing. Um, it's originally in German, you can also get it in English, and there's book one and book two. It's giving you a lot of kind of scale and arpeggio and baroque based exercises with which to improve your technique. So in the first chapter that's called exercises for velocity, finger movement, he started off by writing his own exercises. <laughs> and he has given no less than 12 different options for how you can articulate this. And so on. And then he couples his own exercises with examples from existing repertoire. So over the page we have music from Pepeche and from Louie and from Marcello and from Telemann and from Handel and from Poletsky. And then in book two. That was book two! What what is my brain doing today? Okay, book one reads much like more much more like a normal recorder method. So for example here it's introducing a note that's the C sharp and it's immediately putting it into the repertoire. So we have pieces from yeah, folk songs and from Handel. It's a little bit dry. So I wouldn't recommend using this as a book to actually learn the recorder with, but it's a great way of coupling repertoire onto what you're already doing. The same in around the same time period, now we are going back to 1956 to Mr. Hans Ulrich Stepp's The Daily Lesson. And I talk about this book a lot because I like it. It's very simple in concept, but it's really worked. You can take these actually very simply and you can build them up into very advanced exercises. For example, we start with pentatonic sequences. Actually little segments of this book I take out and I do also with my little eight and nine year old recorder students. At the moment somehow they think playing scales is great fun which of course it is. If I take little ideas and exercises from there, we can use them as musical games. So he goes through all different kinds of patterns, descending fourths, tetrachords, up and down. I am curious about his sequences of three notes in four note groups chromatic. Okay, so in the daily lesson, he basically takes scales and arpeggios and chords in every key and he mixes them up and combines them in every single way to give you an endless treasure trove of things to get your fingers around. Continuing in the theme of finger control, we are going to Franz Bruchen, Five Studies for Finger Control. This was published in 1957 and I like these because they're kind of neoclassical, neo-baroque flavour. They're kind of etudes that you can get your fingers around, you still feel like you're playing a piece but you're really practising that dexterity at the same time. And there are five studies, they look a bit like this. one is my favourite. It's kind of a bit romantic. Makes me think of Stravinsky. 
which is great to play on recorder. With this idea of etudes and studies, these are like little pieces that can help you practice. They're music, but they're also healthy music. It's like having a muesli bar as a snack. This book was given to me by one of my colleagues. It's a book by Hans B. Goning, and it's called 25 Etudes, 25 Studies. Um, and these are much more intermediate level. There's about four etudes per page, as you can see. For example, number three. Then by the time you're at the end of the book, it's a bit harder. If you're looking for a book of studies at intermediate level that all sound really nice but are very healthy from your fingers, uh, 25 Etudes by Hans P. Goning can be the way forward. Speaking of studies that sound nice, <laughs> my favourite book is 36 Etudes by Bousquet. And this is from 1851, so we are really playing classical music, uh, kind of classical, romantic, oh, and it's great. You know what, it's so good to play this kind of music on the recorder. It's almost cheesy, but I love it. This book also has a really nice um, introduction to the recorder in the 19th century and the chacan and the flageolet flute so that's a nice bit of uh, history in there players we don't often get to play 19th century music but it's really nice and it's really good for us so if you're looking for a kind of classical challenge go for these studies we're going from the very beautiful sounding studies to the ones that will make your ears bleed but they are very good for you this is actually my favorite favorite technique book in the world it has done more from my technique than any other. I've talked about it before. This is Three Exercises for Alto Recorder by Case Booker. As you can see my copy has completely fallen apart. <laughs> so these are, as they say, three exercises. The first is for the right hand, the second is for the left hand and the third is called the 28 steps and it takes every note on the recorder within a certain range and it features every single combination of notes that there is. And it also replaces some of the notes with alternate fingerings. So you're playing In my video, How to Play Fast, I discuss how you can take parts of these exercises and build them into your own practice. With these, it's not so much the idea that you just put it on your stand and play through it. Of course, if you got to that point, that's fine, but I much prefer to take one or two bars and really dive into them as a technical exercise. A lot of these books are really concentrating on the fingers, but what about the tongue? That's a huge part of playing the recorder. So Case Booker also wrote a book called The Complete Articulator. And this is all about the articulation that you use and you can use all of these exercises for any combinations of syllables now he gives suggestions for example part one da 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 but of course you can mix it up, you can make up your own. And the examples he gives are doing a combination of D and T, but of course you can use it for double tonguing or triple tonguing. So let's see if I can do one of these. So while since I practiced them, number six, and I'm going for 
So it's a really smart way of combining that extra careful practice of your tongue with quite complicated finger work and then of course you can take the principles that he's outlined here and apply it to any pieces you're playing or other technical exercises that you're doing. Thanks Case! Okay we're gonna we're really getting into the crazy stuff now. This book is called The Sweet and Sour Recorder. Actually it's called Il Flauto Dolce ed Arcebo. I can't pronounce that. This book is from 1969 and it's by Michael Fetter. Um, he was making really crazy music in the 60s. This book is called Introductions and Exercises for Players of New Recorded Music and it's basically fingering charts. It's an amazing resource for composers as well as recorder players and he gives charts and charts and charts of all the different sounds you can make on the recorder. Not only the notes, but all kinds of multiphonics, harmonics. I'm just gonna take one at random. So if you're working with a composer who says, ah, oh, I wanna hear this kind of sound, you can just give him this book and he can find exactly how it is. Or if you're playing a piece of music that calls for a certain multiphonic, a certain chord, um, and you're not quite sure how to realize it, then you can find it in here. The second half of the book is technical exercises, and these are crazy. Ah, oh, it's nice, he also, links these technical exercises to existing pieces. This book was written in 1969, so the exercises he gives are quite dated. We have a lot of Rob Dubois, Musique for Alt Block Flaut, um, a lot of Hank Bardings and Lennox Barkley and Benjamin Britten. Of course, the recorder has come a long way since then, but it's still great music, right? So he gives kind of reams of explanation coupled with examples. It's a nice historical document and then at the end, for example, this exercise is about interval leaps. Continuing with the theme of contemporary music, we have the Quarter Tone Recorder Manual. This was compiled by Catherine Bennett, D Donald Boosted and Peter Bowman. And it's great. The recorder is not only a chromatic instrument, it's a microtonal instrument. You can do a glissando over the whole range of the instrument. <laughs> That means that you can actually play all of the notes between the notes. So quarter tones are simply taking semitones and splitting them in half. What I really like is first that they give um, a really thorough explanation of quarter tones, then they take you through the process of first hearing the quarter tone with the fingerings written down. <laughs> And then they really build up the exercises so you can slowly bring them into your playing. Like... What I also really love about this book is that they give a list of music in which quarter tones are used. There is new music being composed all the time, so you could never publish it in a list like this, but they do give uh, a link to a website where you can keep up to date with it. Another great website for looking up contemporary recording music is blogflout.org. Uh, that is a Dutch organisation whose mission it is to catalogue every single piece of contemporary music for a recorder. I think there are already more than 6,000 compositions in there which is really cool. This brings me to the last book in my collection today and it's by Adrian Brown who is a phenomenal recorder maker. He makes absolutely beautiful renaissance consorts. Imagine my joy when I found this in a second-hand bookshop. Adrian Brown 
the recorder workshop manual. In the 80s he wrote a book on building recorders and it has all about the physics of the recorder, how to take care of your recorder like replacing the block, how to deal with fungus and insects, how to apply the thread, the principles of tuning, um, how to revoice your instrument, how to oil it, how to scrape out the hole so you alter the tuning. A lot of the things in this book I will not be trying at home. I'm happy to leave the revoicing of my recorders to the professionals but it's really fascinating to read about and <laughs> my favourite thing is that whoever owned it before me left some nice big coffee rings on there. As I went to make this... <laughs> As I went to make this video, you know, I've been preparing it in my head for a while, I went on Facebook and I saw that my colleague Barrett Spanhofer has actually just published the English edition of his book, The Finishing Touch to Practicing. And I was like, oh, I wish I had a copy now so I could talk about it. But I've ordered it and I'm really looking forward to seeing what that is, um, what that is there. If any of you have his book already, do let me know how it is because I'm looking forward to getting stuck into it. Uh, and Barrett's book is published by Merck. Thank you for watching this video on all the different books I like to use when I'm practicing the recorder. There are definitely ones that I haven't mentioned, so if you have one that you really like, do let me know about it in the comments because I'm always looking for new ones to buy. Below, I am gonna write the full titles, authors and publishing details of all of these books. So if you think, oh, that one looks really interesting, you can find it below and order it. So from me and my giant pile of recorder books, 